Hello everybody, this is Paul. I work for an Autodesk reseller in Cape Town, South Africa called Micrographics. This morning I'd like to have a look at the mass modeling, specifically the revolve command. I recently taught an essentials course and once again because I don't use the command so frequently I found it necessary to just refresh on how to do the revolve. So for those of you that don't know mass modeling, it is essentially a massing element that you can use at the beginning of your project <coughs> to represent a conceptual design. And you would load it into a project and you could manipulate it in various ways to give you some other interesting shape, mass flooring, typical sort of areas that you might plan at the beginning of the building and so on and so forth. So lots of interesting things you can do. Energy analysis, you can divide the surface and put some patterns onto the facade so it looks something like an interesting facade. You can attach adaptive components to it. You know, it's basically the beginning of a project, the conceptual idea of, of that project. So to start off you might create a new family because these mass models are typically done within the family. Typically, you can also model them in place if you have the full Revit license. And you will find them under the conceptual mass category within the family templates. There's the metric mass that we're going to use. Of course, here in South Africa, we use the metric system. If you needed the families in Imperial, you would be in America. And this opens the, the mass modeling interface, which is typically it's different from the family modeling interface that we are used to. It's different from the project modeling interface. And it behaves, I wouldn't say strangely, but it, Revit is a parametric modeling engine, so it doesn't really understand, or how should I say, it makes assumptions, and you have to get to know how it works before you can make it work. So for somebody that comes from a background of solid modeling, be it in AutoCAD or these days inventor in the past mechanical desktop or some other platform we would have a typical way in which we would create boolean solids we would want to have a profile and then we would also specify some other element around which to revolve that we could also specify if it had to be a solid or if it had to be a surface so we'll quickly have a look at some of the options that you've got when you create that when you open this family model you'll see that you've got a plane left and right this is front and back, and that is left and right. They're named planes, and they define the origin. And then you've also got your east, north, south, and west elevations. And within those, they would have the relevant planes set as the work plane by default. You also have a level, which is a ground level. And then you can also create new levels based on the level below there. You would be able to place another level at some other distance away from the first got a temporary dimension that you can manipulate as well and you might put that at some other height uh, just for the sake of this exercise a 40 meters building as such and then we can have a look at the elevation because what we want to do is we want to do revolve something that uh, we can revolve around an axis and ultimately we want a solid coming out of that and not a surface. So to start modeling something like this you have to recognize that you need an axis of revolution which in this case might be the side on view of the center left and uh, center front and back planes as look from the east direction and then you, you would begin with creating the revolve uh, command you would think but it doesn't exist. The only thing that exists here is that you can create some lines. Lines, squares, pentagons, circles, arcs in two different ways, fillets. You can create splines, splines through points, ellipses, elliptical arcs, you can pick lines, you can place points. So those are the options for you but you don't see revolve. So the first thing to recognize is that well Revit is going to make a decision for you on how to create a solid based on the elements that you draw. And you then start drawing some other elements. So let's suppose that would be my roof and my floor would be at the bottom somewhere. 
and then I want some interesting shape so I might draw a spline I can snap to the endpoint there and I might draw some other interesting shape for this building and then press escape to exit that command go back to line command and go back to the origin and close that entity up All right, so we have a line at the top, a line at the bottom a line through the middle over there and the spline you can see if we click that it recognizes everything together and if we tab onto one of those elements then we can move it around. So let's suppose we leave a sort of an interior hollow within that shape and now we'd like to revolve that. That would be easy, right? But let's suppose if we didn't have that shape and we're going to move that line right onto the center there. Now, the mistake that you might make is to say, right, I can see this entire thing there and now I'd like to create a form from it, a solid form. Then what does that do? Well, it just creates an extrusion, right? So that's no good. And then you might also think, well, let's try and figure this out. What if I drag these lines a bit shorter so that Revit sees that it's got an axis and somewhere other shape? And again, that will not work. Because what happens then, if you select this area and that area and then create a form, we find that we end up with a surface. It's hollow on the inside. You can see, you can see inside of that shape. So that that is also not going to work. So the thing to recognize is that what it requires is for you to have a continuous profile, which is closed. There must be no open gaps there. But then that you must also sketch another axis. Sketch it off the profile that you've created, completely separate. And then select both the axis and the profile. And now suddenly Revit understands that if you want to create a solid form, it's going to revolve that form for you. Right, so if you want a solid to come out of this mass modeling, you have to create a continuous profile that's closed, but then you also have to create a separate line that denotes the revolution axis or the revolve axis. So that would be the that would be the um, the method of creating a solid revolve, which you can then save or just load into your project, and then you can place that into your project. You can also do lots of other interesting things with this, but that would be the way in which you can get your your custom mass into your building or into your project. And from there you can manipulate it further. All right, so separate axis and a continuous profile, select them both, and then your revolve will happen.